Right, it's Terry N6 TLU and I have the first DX60 transmitter to receive the push to talk module and it happens to belong to Dan N8 ZBA. ZBA. Yeah. So he's a big AM or like me and you're on the DX60 net, right? I am. Cool. I am. So hopefully we'll get this done and work perfectly and he's getting it for free because he's helping me out. All right. Stay well, tuned guys. Yeah. Thank you. All right, man. Cool. It's Terry N6 TLU here at D-Lab, and in this video, I'm going to show you another application for the D-Lab K1 push-to-talk module. Now, in my previous video, I showed this being installed into a Johnson Ranger. However, that's not the only radio that it can go into. It's actually a pretty universal module that can go in many transmitters. You just have to reconfigure the wiring. So I thought, what is the best target radio to present next? And that would be the Heathkit DX60. Not only is it a very popular transmitter, but it, of course, lacks push-to-talk, but it has that same rotary switch like you would see on a Ranger. So I thought, man, I have to feature that radio. The problem is, I didn't have one. So I put a want out on a ham net, and Dan... N8ZBA came to my rescue. We met up on the road. He gave me his DX60B, which is operational. And the deal is, is I'll install the module for free so that I can show you guys how to do it and hopefully sell more kits. Here we go. So here is the DX60B that we're going to install push to talk into. Function switch, you've got the same positions as the Ranger off, tune, standby, AM, and CW. So as I stated, the DX60 utilizes the same type of rotary switch that the Ranger does. So if you want to transmit, you have to go to AM. And when you're done, you have to go back to standby. So every transmission, you're toggling that switch, which of course, over time, will wear it out. And then you have the biggest problem, you can't find the switch. Usually, guys are finding hanger queens of this radio stripping out the switch to fix their other one. So over time, you're going to have a lot of DX60s that are going to end up in the junk pile. So the push-to-talk option will save the wear and tear on the switch and hopefully keep these guys on the air longer. Well, here's the K1 module that I'm going to install into the DX60. Now, you can see this one does not have the octal socket. I'm actually going to mount this module underneath the chassis and hardwire it in. Now, if you wanted an octal socket on your chassis, you'd have to punch a hole, land the octal socket, and then this could be installed similar to how it is in the Ranger. Now, the other thing that's going to have to be done is you can see the mic input here. It's the old standard input that they used back in the day, simply audio in with no switching. The owner wants to install a four pin mic jack in its place. I'm not going to do that until the last step. We can install the module and check out the installation before opening this hole up and putting this in, right? So we're going to leave that alone. I made up a sketch of the installation. It looks pretty basic as you can see. We're going to get into the function switch just like we did on the Ranger. Add our wiring, put in our module, and connect in our new mic jack. So first thing, let's get this thing open. Remember, I have not done one of these. So you'll see what I see and hopefully come up with a cool, effective way to install the module. Here's the bottom side of the Heath DX60B. You can see she looks really clean, unmodified, pretty much completely stock. Whoever built it did a great job there is the function switch. Now I'm going to have to get into that and get onto these terminals. It's a little tight, but very doable. So the question would be, is where are we going to put the K1 module? Well, I see a footprint right here. So I'm going to just take this guy. We're going to use some double stick tape. It's going to sit right there. These contacts will go over to the function switch. And then the other side has to go to the accessory plug on the back of the radio for toggling your TR switch. So we're going to have some wires chasing down that way. But most of the work 
is done up here with a function switch and of course we need to get in here and put in the new mic jack. That's the last step. So to mount the module I'm just using double stick foam tape okay so there's no holes to drill mangle up your radio so I've got the K1 module mounted where I want it for this installation so the first step is I need 6 volt AC filament power to go to the board V4 has it available right here the brown wire and ground so I'm going to take some jumpers connect to those pins and connect to the K1 then we'll wire up the function switch so one thing to note, to install the module, you do not have to remove the upper lid because there's no work that's being done up there, right? So it gives you a nice convenient way to work on the transmitter without damaging anything. I've got the module in and the filament circuit is hooked up. So next, we'll do a quick check and see if the thing will actuate. So at this point, remember, there's high voltage present in your radio, so be careful. But all I'm going to do is take a jumper wire, go to ground, and we're going to go to the push-to-talk input, and you should hear the relay click. Yes, it's working. Time to wire up the rest of it. I've connected the interface wiring to the push-to-talk board. So looking at the diagram, you can see everything's color-coded, right? So here is the green and red, which will be going to the function switch. The blue line will be our push-to-talk input, which will go to the future mic jack that we're going to install. This white wire that you see taken off back here, that's going to go to the accessory plug pin 5. So that will do your 120 switching when you key up the radio. All right, part of this procedure, you have to be able to get to pin 9 of the rotary power switch which of course is down at the bottom. So the only way to get access to it, which is right there, you have to take the hardware off of that function switch and the drive control so you can pull things back and bring the function switch up to gain access to the terminals because what you need to do is remove the wire from pin 9 and that goes in series with one set of the push to talk relay contacts. I've connected the green wire to terminal 9 of the function switch that's underneath where you can't see it. This wire, the white wire, used to be connected to pin 9. Now it's going to go to this white wire which is going to one side of the PTT relay, right? So I'll solder this guy in. We're just going to solder in line. Then I have some heat shrink I'm going to put over that wire. What I'm doing is simply putting the PTT relay in series with this line which was the switched 120 that goes to the rear accessory socket for your TR relay switching. I've wrapped up the wiring to the function switch of the DX60B. Just did the key line which is this side of the K1 relay so it's the red black wire. Now the black goes down to pin 8 of the function switch and if you look over here there's a yellow wire that now is spliced with the red wire. So that closes the loop on the bias line when you're keying your transmitter. So one side of the relay does the 120 volt switching for your TR relay, and the other side simply is in the key line. And that's how your transmitter will work with push to talk. So here's the initial test of the push to talk system. As I stated, I do not have the mic jack installed, but we do have the key line right here. So we're in standby. I'm going to key it. You can see there's no voltage for the TR relay. There's no output. Okay, now I'll go to AM mode. 124 volts right there for your TR, and we have power output. Then you can go to CW mode. Same deal, but higher power. So everything looks good. Next, let's get the mic jack in, rewire the D104, and watch push to talk work with modulation. So there's the old mic jack. You can see the hole there, and this is what we need to put in. So, yep, she has to be opened up a little bit, but nothing that a nice stepper bit can't handle. 
Just be careful when you do this that you clear all the wiring from behind so you don't damage anything in the process. And yeah, it's going to be a little bit messy, but we'll clean her up, get the new jack in there. It'll look like a million bucks. The new four pin mic jack is installed. So pin one is mic in, two is ground, three is push to talk switching. And you can see I soldered the nut right to the chassis because this was a little bit difficult to get it in here. She was pretty tight. I was able to tighten it, but I was concerned that over time the nut might try to work its way loose. So what I would recommend if you're going to do this, if you don't want to go through this little operation, I would recommend going with like a switched quarter inch headphone type input. The profile is smaller, you won't have to drill such a big hole, and it should be easier to get her mounted up since the nut goes on from the front. Alright, so there's the new 4-pin mic jack installed. Going to the push to talk module. Hook up the old D104. Remember we're in standby, so if I key the mic, you get nothing. You can hear the relay clicking, but it's doing nothing at this point because you're in standby. Go to AM, see your high voltage light came on. Yep, we're talking. So that's working. Now let's say you wanted to do some high power tune-up. Go to CW. Normally that would key the transmitter, but now you key it with the mic. So there's your higher power right there, CW mode. So to that point, this modification is for guys that are running the DX60 on AM and wanted push to talk in AM mode, okay? So if you go to CW mode, it's not going to key until you key it with the microphone, right? Because the push to talk module has now disabled the keying circuit. So if you elect that you would like to go to CW mode, you're going to have to make a shorting plug that keys the push to talk module so that when you go to CW, it'll actually transmit. So that is one downfall of this method of push to talk for the DX60. But the operator in this case is only running it AM. So it shouldn't be an issue. But that's something to keep in mind. And maybe in a future model of this push to talk circuit, I can add the capability of normal CW function. For demonstration purposes, and to ensure you that CW still works, I've hooked up a key. We're in CW mode. So you can see, if I key it, it doesn't transmit. Now envision that I put a shorting plug in here, so push to talk is always on, which it is right now. Now it can key normally. So the roles have kind of reversed, right? You had uh, no push to talk, but you could always key this thing normally with Morse code. Now you flip the tables, right? So now you have to short it to go into CW, but the primary mode of operation is AM. So that's what we got. So for those of you that are wondering what kind of voltage is going into my microphone, when I'm keying up this radio, because I'm sure you've read the horror stories of some radios putting several hundred volts into your microphone contacts, here is the resting voltage. A little over 16 volts. And of course, when you key the mic, that goes to zero. So a successful integration of the K1 module into a DX60B transmitter. Now, if you have a plain DX60 or the A, the installation would be the same because they all share that same function switch configuration. So that initial diagram that I showed you has been marked up because what I assumed the connections would be weren't all that accurate. Okay, It was a guess. I didn't have the radio at that point, but now it's here and I will update this diagram and post it at the end of this video. So I revised the schematic for the push to talk K1 module installation. Cut to that right now. You can see it's fairly straightforward. You pretty much pop in the module, hook up a few wires. The most difficult part is interfacing to that function switch.
because there's really no way to get to that bottom terminal without pulling the switch out. I guess you could just go back into the wire harness, cut the wire and splice it at that point without pulling the switch, but that's up to you. I prefer to hook directly to the terminal of the wafer switch when possible. So what a great improvement for these old radios, especially now that we're getting a lot of years on them and things are starting to wear out. So you need a backup plan and now we got it. It's called the D-Lab K1 Push to Talk Module. Hope you like the video.